I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and this is Equal Entertainment. He was an all-star. Fans are remembering longtime Smash Mouth frontman Steve Harwell. The band's manager says Harwell passed peacefully and comfortably on Monday morning, surrounded by family and friends at his home in Boise, Idaho. Harwell died of acute liver failure. He was 56 years old. Harwell co-founded the pop rock band Smash Mouth. They had songs including All Star, Walking on the Sun, and I'm a Believer. Harwell left Smash Mouth in 2021. And Jimmy Buffett fans are also in mourning. Fans have created this makeshift memorial outside his Margaritaville shop in Key West, Florida. Buffett died surrounded by his family, friends, music, and dogs. According to a statement from his family, he, quote, lived his life like a song till the very last breath. The musician and business titan had a special relationship with the Contra public. Key West is home to many parrot heads and misfits, but it's also a place of acceptance and love. And that was Buffett's kind of people. I mean, I think that I think that Key West was Jimmy Buffett and Jimmy Buffett was Key West in its own essence. I mean, he was he loved this island so much and he wanted to just make sure that everybody on this planet knew how we live every single day. Um, and that's why he wrote the songs that he did. And that's why he told the stories that he did. No Cause of Death was released. Buffett was known for his laid back music and his greatest hits included Margaritaville and It's Five O'Clock Somewhere. Over the course of his career, he won two Country Music Association awards and was twice nominated for Grammy Awards. He was inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2006. According to his website, Buffett was preparing to release a new record. He was 76 years old. Taylor Swift is breaking another record, this time with her soon-to-be-released concert film that's coming to theaters. AMC Theaters says it took just three hours for Swifties to break its previous single-day sales record. The old number is $16.9 million from Spider-Man No Way Home. Variety reports the Eras tour has racked up $26 million just in pre-sales for AMC. Fandango says the concert film also sets its new record for the biggest first day ticket sales this year. Bad Boy Records founder Sean Diddy Combs is giving power and equity back to artists when it comes to sharing their publishing rights. Some of the names include Biggie Smalls Estate, Faith Evans, Mace, The Locks, and many others. The assets could be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Diddy is giving the music rights back to the original artists and songwriters, despite receiving huge offers to purchase Bad Boy's publishing. A source told Variety the company has contacted most of the recipients and gotten signatures for the necessary paperwork. Grammy-nominated country music artist Brandi Clark has a new self-titled album out that was also produced by Brandi Carlisle. I recently spoke with the out artist about the collaboration and the origins of this very personal album. Hi, welcome Brandy Clark, musician. It's so wonderful to speak with you today. I appreciate it. Ah, um, thanks for wanting to speak with me. I'm glad to be here. First, would love to begin by asking you, you know, you've got a few albums out. You've been in the business a while mm -hmm. and a songwriter. And why a self-titled album at this juncture? Where did that, why did that feel like well, a good I mean, it came about for a couple of reasons. I'll tell you the funny reason it came about. Um, first. So when Brandy and I started talking about working together, one thing she said that really intrigued me was she said, I see this as your return to the Northwest. Because even though I've lived in Nashville for 25 years, I grew up in Washington State, not all that far from where Brandy grew up. And so we have that in common. And when she said your return to the Northwest, that was really intriguing to me because I've never I've never really talked about the Northwest in any of my songs. And so I decided to go to the Northwest with, with a really uh, great collaborator and friend of mine, Jesse Joe Dillon, and write for a few days. And, and we specifically were trying to write a song called Northwest, and we did that. And so after that was done, I got it in my head that the album was going to be titled Northwest. And I started telling people that. And um, every time I would say it, somebody would say, well, you know, that's Kim and Kanye's kid. Oh yeah. Right. And, and so, and the first time it got, the first time it got said to me, I thought, oh, you know, who cares? But it kept that, that was sort of the consistent note. So I thought, okay, well, it's not going to be called Northwest. And so that's the funny story, but, but the right. real, I, I hadn't done a, a self-titled album 
And in making this record with Brandy, it was a return to home of sorts, like a return to home of, to the Northwest um, and really a return home of all the reasons why I ever wanted to write songs and sing songs and play music to begin with. I, I, re, I was reintroduced to that through Brandy um, and making this record. And so it felt like a really raw and honest version of myself. And, and I almost hate to say that because I feel like all of my records have been me or parts of me. Um, but this one's definitely the most me. And so that's why the most basic me, I should say, um, it's really stripped back. And there are a lot of very um, vulnerable um, thoughts on it. And so that was why ultimately it was self-titled. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing that with me. And I'd love to ask you a little bit about your songwriting process. I, I just picked up a book by Dar Williams about how to write mm -hmm. uh, a song that matters. And there's so many good little entry points into songwriting in this book. And I'd love to hear how you find your entry points into, into songs. Well, that's really a, interesting what you said and how to write a song that matters. Cause I think that's really the key. You know, we can, those of us that write songs a lot, we can all write a song, but to write one that matters, that's what, that's really what we're after. And I think for me, an entry point is the truth. You know, even if the, even if the truth gets stretched, if I can start in the truth, the song will matter. I mean, a really two great examples on this record are Dear Security and She Smoked in the House. Um, <laughs> Dear so Security, that's something that I, those are, those are my insecurities. You know, that was really literally a letter to insecurity. Mm -hmm. Um and then she smoked in the house. I wrote that about my grandma. Every every line of it's true. And that's a song. It's just such I always love when this happens to me as a writer and an artist. I thought that song was just for me. I didn't think there was anybody else that would relate to that. I mean, I knew a few people would, but it was really me. It was really a celebration of my grandma. It was it was to honor my grandma. And that song, more than just about any song on the record, resonates with people. And it's a good reminder to me that if it matters to me, it'll matter to someone else. Yeah. And that's a, that's a good reminder. So I think that to answer your question, I think the truth, yeah. you know, if you can start in the truth, it'll, it'll matter. People know the difference between, you know, you can't BS listeners. They know, they know what's real and what's not. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I mean, just that title, she smoked in the house that conjures, I can smell that. Like I can smell what that brings up. Yeah. Right? It's so good. So congratulations on that. And I wanted, uh, I do want to touch on a little bit about the process of working with Brandy Carlisle, who has her hands in all the pies lately. She's just doing mm -hmm. so, so much. Um, right. And yet when the two of you met, there was this intimacy, this, as you said, friendship that really shone through, uh, and then also collaborating with friends, sometimes that can be a, a little overwhelming, I think, or a, a very mm -hmm. intimate. And I wonder, would you talk about that process? Yeah, you know, for me with Brandy, it was different than any other producer I've worked with um, because she's an artist herself. And I've never worked with a producer who's also a recording artist or who's a current recording artist. You know, a lot of times producers become, uh, start out as, as recording artists themselves or songwriters and that part of their career doesn't work out the way they want and they become very successful producers. With Brandy, you know, she's a highly successful recording artist in her own right. And I think, you know, there were parts of it um, that were difficult for me at first, you know. I think at first it was difficult for me, when I say at first, like maybe the first day, you know. I realized I didn't see her as a producer in the same way I saw other producers I'd worked with because she's a recording artist, which wasn't fair. Mm -hmm. And so after the first day, you know, I said to her, I'm just going to trust you because that's what I always do with a producer. I think that's the only way it works. And I, I went in a little bit because of knowing her as something different, maybe not trusting her fully, but man, once I trusted her, it was complete. And it was awesome because she can challenge me in a way that no one else can because she's a recording artist. 
Celine Dion's sister says Dion is a strong woman as she battles a rare condition called stiff person syndrome. Claudette Dion says her sister is doing everything she can to recover. Last December, Dion announced she was putting her career on hold to battle the disease. Stiff person syndrome, or SPS, is a rare neurological disorder that can cause involuntary muscle spasms and stiffness. She's now undergoing treatment with a team of doctors in Las Vegas. You can watch the Advocate channel live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For the Advocate channel, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and thank you for watching.